This video is brought to you by these fantastic sponsors, as well as Mobile Gaming News Network, mobilegamingnews.com, your one-stop shop for all your mobile gaming news, reviews, and information you can use. Head on over and sign up, and if you are inclined to write some articles, go ahead and sign up for that as well. We are always looking for more writers. But with that, let's get into the video. Hey guys, what's up? And Happy 2020. Welcome to the new year. And I'll be completely honest with you. Alencia came a lot faster than I expected. <laughs> Not typically what you say about the ladies. But anyways, definitely came a lot faster than I thought. I thought that we would at least have until maybe after the DN banner. That way we get a side story along with her. But they popped this out immediately beginning of the year they're already coming in strong now let's go over a little bit about her i've talked about her previously when she was uh discussed last time around but let's take a look at everything official on her now that i can read this and people won't be in the comments like hey why about why don't you stop looking at the video and actually pay attention to what they're saying in the video and then you would know what the hell you're talking about so anyways alencia is an earth elemental warrior who dispels all buffs from the enemy while also increasing the defense of the allies now it's kind of a little bit you know she's got that aoe defense buff which is pretty nice actually if you're trying to build a tankier bruisier team uh now a little bit of concerns around some of her skills and i'll get into a little bit more about that after we go over some of them so the first one is eradicate this is going to batter the enemy with a 60 percent chance to decrease defense for one turn damage dealt increases proportional to the caster's max health now if you soul burn this it goes up to 100 percent defense of the target uh for two turns now, if you max this out, you are going to have, was that, a 75% chance. So you'll get an extra 25% chance, which I don't necessarily know is worth the soul burn, especially because you could use your soul burn on multiple other things, other characters that are would do it a bit better overall. Um, now, one of the big things is the modifiers on this kind of oofs. Uh, we'll talk about that here in a second now noble blood uh 25 chance to grant mind's eye to the caster for one turn when attacked when the caster uses eradicate <sighs> see as soon as i I've been, i haven't yawned yet this morning until i started doing these notes it's literally the worst thing ever i think that smilegate put something in the patch notes to make me uh, to make me yawn. But anyways, uh, when you use Eradicate, while granted Mind's Eye, it activates Trample. Now, Trample strikes the enemy, decreasing the cooldown of Genesis by one turn. Damage dealt also increases proportional to the mass caster's max health. Now, when you max this out, it gives you, uh, what is it, 15 to 40 a 50% chance to proc. So 50-50, and that's only if she is attacked. Now, this will be okay if you're going up against, like, cleave teams, like, uh, you know, obviously Dizzy's not on here, but anybody you can kind of, like, bait into cleaving, seaside bells, stuff like that, but you only still have a 50-50 chance. If this was, like, a 75% chance, it'd be a lot better, although, to be fair, if it's not 100%, it might as well be 0% if it's on your team. Um, now this is pretty good because it's, but the thing is, is it's only one turn. Now that kind of is a little crappy just because, you know, it's, it's only one turn. Now, if this was like, Oh, two turns or something like that, it'd be a little bit better. They also really don't go into the description of what mine's eye does here. I believe it was uh increased effect resistance. Yeah. They don't really talk about that. Might go into it on one of the other ones actually. <sighs> But I think that that is kind of a miss right there. So it should be basically either like a 100% chance or 75% chance because let's be real, a 50-50 chance, it's really RNG-ish and chances are you are not going to, you're not going to hit it uh, and it's going to be really frustrating and a lot of people are going to just already say that, you know, she's trash. However, um, it it is nice that if you do have this, it's basically a double up hit on the next one because you're going to eradicate and then immediately trample. So you will be doubling up on that. Maybe that's kind of why they keep it on the lower side because otherwise you would just be double attacking every time. Now, I'm pretty sure that if you do eradicate into trample, you wouldn't be able to... Well, no, you could potentially get the double attack on the S1 into 
the trample, but you wouldn't get the double attack on the trample. So it'd be like Charles's S2, where you don't get a second, you can't get a double attack off of his S2 if it triggers off of his S1. Lots of extra stuff in there. But regardless, it would be kind of good, though, is if you built her kind of slow and tanky on a counterattack set so that if she is getting attacked and she's counterattacking her s1 will go into trample as long as it's up still think that it could use like a buff up to about 75 percent that way you have a better chance but then again people would just build her with like a hundred speed <sighs> and like an absolute truck um so next up is going to be Genesis. This is her S3. Attacks all enemies with Dragon's Might, dispelling all buffs and granting increased defense to all allies for two turns. Damage dealt increases proportional to the caster's max health. Now this one's just going to be your typical S3 where you are going to have your increased damage and your reduced turn. Now... Overall, the reason why a lot of people are kind of on the fence about this is if we hop over here to game press, we can take a look at the skill modifiers and skill power is one, but skill attack rate is 0.5, which is pretty, pretty bad. Now it's attack up uh, times caster time X percent uh, casters max health of 10%. So it's what uh, attack uh, times X percent uh casters so up to 10 percent of casters max health i think that's the way it's supposed to work here um which i mean isn't the best but at the same time isn't horrible uh so i mean if you do stack her like super super tanky uh she can potentially do some some decent amount of damage now for her uh for her s2 here trample is also going to be 0.5 um, and Genesis is also 0.5. Now, I don't know if this was just like the data mine stuff and it might be different, but realistically, usually when they data mine stuff, it doesn't change that much. Now, you do get more of the potential health uh, modifier here on the S3. It's 15%, which I would imagine should be because S3s are supposed to hit a lot harder, but... Um, you know, it is it is what it is. I mean, I do still like the fact that uh, she dispels all buffs and increases AoE defense. There's not a whole ton of people that increase AoE defense. I think Crow, Elson, maybe like one or two others that do that. So that's really a big boon to the team, especially if you're trying to build like a tanky bruiser team. So that's not bad. Now, I'm going to take a look here at her artifact that comes with her. Now, the art's really cool. I really like the artifact uh, art. But, huh, let me drink some energy here. I was up last night farming Banshee pretty late, too, because uh, New Year's Eve and because Banshee. But anyways, so this artifact, uh, at max, caster's critical hit chance increases by 2% whenever somebody's turn starts. Now, this can stack up to 20 times, and it doesn't go away, which is kind of nice, because with Hellcutter... You get your stack, you get your stack, you get your stack, and then as soon as you go, it's gone. But in terms of how it stacks up with Hellcutter, you have a 4% chance whenever somebody ends their turn, uh, effect is removed after the, after the caster's attack. Now, this also increases attack and your crit hit chance. So, realistically, at, uh, at what rank base, base you would have to go through four people's turns in order to get one turn worth of Hellcutter. Now, again, the longer the fight goes on, the more that this benefits you. Uh, it's kind of like Violet's Talisman, where do you use Dream Blade, or do you use Violet's Talisman, where like as it goes, it gets better. But realistically, I think that this is going to be better for PvE than it would be for PvP. Because PvP, you're not going to have that many turns, uh, it really depends because like once you get to us like once you get to higher you get to stall teams there's less cleave you do get a little bit extra turns so this might not be bad in the long run but again I don't feel like you would put this on in place of like a hell cutter because you would get the more res more overall not only that but 
chances are you're going to be running enough crit chance to crit 100% of the time. Where with Hellcutter, let's say you get like people who have like get four or five turns in front of you and you are also getting that attack. So, you know, like you wouldn't run this on an A-Ravi, anything like that. So Hellcutter is going to be the more superior artifact. They might come through and fix this in the future. But right now, I don't think that this is really all that good. Um, if you're planning for like a stall team, like I said, maybe a longer defensive team, uh, this might not be bad if you wanted to drop maybe some crit chance in favor of some other things. Uh, because I mean, if you max this out, which I don't think anybody's really going to, because it's kind of, eh, you get what 40, 40% crit chance. Now, if it was like crit chance, and crit damage this would be ridiculous this would be ridiculously good but because it's just crit chance it's i don't i'm not a big fan not only that but like the attack to health ratio is a little skewed more towards health but i guess this is a more for the long run type of deal here so this is going to be this is going to be the rate up we're going to get the next part of eulogy for a saint now the reason why i thought that this was going to be coming out like a her she was going to be coming out a bit later was because i thought it was going to be after this event like after the dn banner and then they were going to go okay cool here's this dragon here's her side story so you know a little bit more about yafin luna stuff like that but um no no, we're just going to get the next part of Eulogy for a Saint. And this is going to be pretty typical of the previous one. All the same stuff. Uh, for the most part, you're going to have the next currency, which, you know, if you've got the other artifacts that you picked up probably this week, then you're going to be in a good spot for that. We're going to have, uh, we also get the Powder of Knowledge Shop change, which actually this is really, really good because I need to pick up uh, and finish up some Sigurd sites. Elbert's Ritual Sword is really good. Alexa's Basket's finally good. I mean, they changed it, so this is actually worth to get. Um, Celestine is also pretty solid, but, you know, out of these, definitely want to pick up Sigurd Scythe and Elbert's Ritual Sword if you don't have it. Uh, really, really important. You can finish up your Arius if you haven't yet. Um, so this is actually a really, really good change into the Powder of Knowledge shop. Now, I wanted to take a look over here to see if they if they went into her... Um, what Mind's Eye granted? No, absolutely not. So we'll take a look over here, and I'll explain a little bit. So Mind's Eye, Skill Enhanced, they don't talk about what Mind's Eye does. Nobody does. Nobody does, but I want to believe it was, um, it was, uh, do you have an overview? Guys, come on. Guys, come on. What's Mind's Eye do? Mind's Eye was, uh, effect resist, I believe. I'd have to go back and look. It's kind of early for me, but, um, yeah, that was kind of what, kind of what that did. So, Yeah. Um, overall, do I think that you should roll for, uh, it depends on what you want. Honestly, I think that they'll probably come back through and change her eventually because those modifiers are kind of poopy. Um, but I'm interested to see how she plays, how she looks, um, or how she works. I definitely enjoy the animations on her skills for sure. Uh, and really, realistically, I will gladly take any other water, uh, uh grass unit. Not only that, but I mean, her S3 was really cute. Uh, so I'll definitely be rolling for her as soon as we are able to. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting into more of the DN side story. Uh, however, there is the uh, double up AP on um, on side story nodes right now. Or not in the side story, but... Uh, adventure so i'm gonna be doing that uh realistically like having these buffs in 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 play uh really cut down on a lot of the other things that i was doing because i'm trying to focus on one of those one big thing to do as well is make sure that you are doing the automation tower while the gold buff is up because you get the extra gold uh going through tower so um, maybe take some time now, or maybe wait, take some time when runes are up. If you're not really big on farming runes, which I'm not super huge on, um, and just farm yourself up the automation tower. Um, I would suggest going into the adventure and building up uh, massive amounts of AP so that you can buy more catalysts. 
uh, because that's really, really important. So anyways, guys, uh, let me know. Are you going to be rolling for her? Uh, a little bit disappointed in some of her abilities, but uh, overall, it'll be it'll be kind of interesting to see uh, what goes on uh, with her. I also liked that she has defense um, for the imprint. Uh, not too many people have that, so you could put her in either the front or back spot and then put two people that you need that increased defense on um, in the top and bottom slot. Uh, it depends on how fast she comes at the beginning um, on whether or not I continue to pull for her for imprints, but uh, probably not going to, honestly. Um, as much as I would like a 12.9% defense increase um, to maybe my tankier or some of my squishier units, uh, I don't think that it is going to be super, super worth uh, at the moment. At the moment. I think she'll be okay, but not like game-breaking in any way, shape, or form. So, anyways, guys, let me know what you think, and I will catch you guys later. I'll probably be streaming pretty much like uh, most of the day farming. So, just, just come on over and hang out. I'll catch you guys later. Take it easy, homies. Peace. Yeah.